I'm here with uh, Brian Zan. So Brian messaged me uh, a, a few days ago, um, saying he has invested a lot in like a lot of different AI companies, and he had like high level takes on at the state of like AI more like in business or startups. So that was a kind of like a nice balance between like the research we have at ICML. Um, yeah, nice to to meet you. Welcome to the show. Yeah, um, nice to meet you as well. Uh, thanks for having me here. Um, what kind of like takes do you have about the the state of AI right now? Um, yeah, so. Uh, as an, uh, at CRV, we uh, meet most of the AI startups that are uh, fundraising. Um, I've been focusing a lot on the seed stage, and so I would what's, really. What's CRV? Uh, CRV is uh, Charles River Ventures. It's a VC that got started in 1970 to back um, research by MIT founders. Uh, eventually, we renamed from Charles River Ventures to CRV because. We can't be named after a river in Boston if we're now in the Bay Area. Hmm. And uh, we've backed a lot of the uh, big companies today, like Airtable, DoorDash, Twitter, Vercel, Postman, Startree, Iterable. Um, and we continue to just uh, just really focus on, on backing the best founders in markets that we think will be growing very quickly. Who do you think, um, like, did? Who do you think is the leader right now in, in, in AI as like the, the public trading company? Like, is it NVIDIA or is, it like, is there like other actors you think people should invest more in? NVIDIA is definitely at the very top of the public companies. I would say, though, that I would be very cautious about investing in NVIDIA right now because the stock is at an all time high and the multiples it's being traded at is just completely insane. I do think that one of the other uh, like existential risks to NVIDIA is really just that there's like very a lot of very innovative uh, chip designs on the market that can do like machine learning training inference much more efficiently. Um, we know both big players and startups are b building very competitive chip designs to NVIDIA. Um, so personally, I have not invested in NVIDIA. <laughs> um, and. So, what are like the main the main trends you, you've been seeing right now? Uh, I know, I know, like recently we we had like some like kind of like GPU shortage, like a lot of companies like yeah. buying a lot of GPUs. Do you have like any other like high level trends you can yeah. talk about? I think the trends to really make note of are like I'd say those trends in the application layer and infrastructure layer are both extremely exciting. Um, so, starting off in the application layer, where uh, people have probably seen most of these companies, uh, and the application layer. Like there's a lot of AI companies that are just completely rethinking like vertical industries and how people like really interact with software to get their job done. Um, so the to give some examples, um, two of the categories that I am personally the most excited about are the inter AI for entertainment category and AI for creativity category. Um, so starting off in the entertainment category, probably the leading one is character.ai. What we're seeing is that like our generation is like spending time on Netflix, maybe Roblox. Um, but what we're seeing Gen Z doing is spending their time talking to character.ai, like characters on character.ai. And I, I know that might sound silly. That was my first reaction. No, I, I'm, 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 not, I'm, not, I'm not laughing because it's silly. I'm just, I'm just like laughing at, at the state of the world of, of like, do, you, do, do we actually have stats of like the fraction of people who like spend their, their, their day talking to characters? Um, it's. It's very, very high. The user, the user growth, the user engagement is just through the roof. It's more than anything that we have ever seen. Um, yeah, people are just talking to an AI personal companion, talking to, and there's a lot of there's a lot of people talking to AI um, hentai characters, uh, like uh, like very not safe for work characters. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's. It's basically the next platform where uh, people like the G Gen Z is just really spending their time and finding really entertaining. It's basically the next gen Netflix and Roblox entertainment platform. But but r r right now it's mostly like textual, right? You don't, you, you don't have the like full like interact with a character and there's like video or image or, or some, something yeah. like and maybe people are, are starting to do it. But the, the thing you're mentioning is mostly textual, right? Um, today it is text-based, but 
Um, that's actually what makes it so exciting to me. The fact that they have reached the level of engagement and the level of usage that they do as like already being at the very top of the, like character.ai is already at the top of the app store with just text-based conversations. Imagine once they start adding audio conversations. Imagine once they start adding like a video character that you can actually talk to. That is way more engaging. And I think it will just shoot up the engagement stats, shoot up the uh, daily active users. And this could be the next thing that every, this could be the next Instagram or TikTok. And so is your, is your company like, um, so is, is CRT like investing in, in those kind of things at the moment or? Um, we have, uh, we have not yet made an investment in one of these companies, but we're extremely open-minded about it. And we've actually been meeting a lot of companies in this category. Um, yeah, where's ICML right now? Have you seen like any like good papers or like interesting takes on uh, like generative AI or like, do you, do you think that's like more papers on, in this, like more research in this than like a few years ago? In, in my experience, it's been like, it's kind of like exploding. I see like a lot of papers in this. Um, to be completely honest, um, a lot of the companies that we have been seeing uh, take off, uh, they don't necessarily have the best training, uh, the, the best machine learning model. A lot of times it's just having like really smart go to go to market strategies. Um, like GPT four already works really well, so all the all the founders really need to do is fine tune GPT four on the right training data. And so the the companies that do tend to be emerging, of course, Character AI is founded by one of the Transformer author papers uh, authors and has like a very uniquely good model. But you can like just like fine tune GPT four uh, by default. Maybe you can like do a business deal with OpenAI to like to fine tune GPT four. But out of the yeah. box, I don't think you can fine tune GPT four. Um, yeah. So pe people, uh, OpenAI does offer a fine tuning suite for GPT four, and uh, there's actually some startups like Lepton AI that give you an interface uh, to fine tune GPT four. So the, um, there are platforms that enable you to fine tune the API to work really well. And actually, to be completely honest, uh, there's, there are, uh, of course, not to name specific names, but a lot of the uh, character.ai alternatives that we meet have achieved insane engagement stats and like north of $10 million of annual revenue uh, by just fine tuning GPT-4. So the market is wide open for everyone to just go build and see what works. Do you have like any other like exciting like ML uh, trend or, or or set of companies that you think are exciting in yeah. the, in this space or? Yeah, um, I would say that uh, I have personally spent much more time in the infrastructure layer, and I've personally backed a lot of startups there. Um, some of the startups that I am the most excited about. Um, one category is model serving. I think that as we're, we're seeing this explosion of AI application startups and every single company like Notion releasing an AI product. And everyone needs a, a platform to, that really helps them serve these large language models at scale, fine tune them, evaluate them, and just really deploy at scale, which is a really challenging problem today. And to date, we've seen a lot of startups uh, get really fast traction, like modal, uh, with like very with a very simple code base. Um, but what, what's, what's, what's modal for people who don't know? Uh, modal is a model serving startup that helps uh, startups, mainly startups, serve large language models um, to end users. Um, but the startup that we backed was uh, Lepton AI. And um, that that is mainly because, uh, that, that is mainly just because um, the uh, just Lepton AI has just ha has done a, a really amazing job of really serving large language models at any scale that users want, uh, solving all the Kubernetes scaling challenges, offering a fine tuning API that really enables people to train models using the state of the art techniques. Um, so we find that to be incredibly exciting. Um, some of the yeah, and I guess. Along that category, um, another startup, another category that we find extremely interesting 
is vector data, uh, AI databases. And this is actually a space that is particularly interesting because a lot of the early startups in this category, um, like Chroma, Weaviate, have just really focused on providing people with vector retrieval. Um, but, you know, like f for a real AI developer that is tr trying to like manage their AI data, there, it, it's much more than just vector retrieval. Like sometimes index search is the best way to like really search for the AI data. And the set of challenges is actually just like way more than just vector retrieval. Another big challenge is like, how do you store like large amounts of image data uh, at scale? And so to this end, uh, some, some of the startups that have done a really good job, um, Pinecone has done a really great job at doing vector retrieval at scale. And I think that a really interesting emerging player is LanceDB. And because uh, they, it's founded by the co-creator of Pandas, highly credible guy, uh, Changsha, and uh, he has just done an incredible job of truly building an AI database that serves the need of the end AI developer. And I do think that the traction that he has with a lot of the large enterprise ML engineers um, really just show, showcases that he has done a really good job in doing this. Um, yeah, so I, I would say that um, another another category that we do think is going to be very large is machine learning for enterprises. And the startup that is probably the furthest along here is Sambanova Systems. Um, they've just done a really great job of going to like where the money is. They got their start in uh, selling to financial institutions that say like, we want things to be so secure that we want to like physically own the hardware that's serving our machine learning models. And so they've just done a really good job of building end-to-end -end machine, like truly end-to-end -end large, our large language model serving. And um, they have the, they have the traction with the Fortune 500 enterprises and the revenue to speak for it. And I guess an, like another category in infrastructure that has just gotten a lot of press recently is Hugging Face, having just raised their four to six billion dollar uh, round. And Hugging Face story is actually very interesting. They came to fame by being the first um, by being the first company to. Uh, serve the BERT uh, bidirectional encoding transfor uh, transformer model uh, to the masses. Like uh, back when Google first, uh, ba uh, back when like BERT was first released, it was just something proprietary. Like people couldn't really just like easily use the model. So Hugging Face said, you know what, we're gonna um, we're going to like focus on the open source community, and here's a place for everyone to use the first like really good transformer model. And that just got them a lot of traction. Uh, they explored many different directions and um, they've just gotten insane traction um, by being a, uh, by being a cons ML consulting company. So th we, we're just like seeing lots of enterprises like Databricks, Dolly, Disney, um, just uh, all going to Hugging Face for really to really be the McKinsey or Accenture of ML, of ML consulting. Like, so, yeah. so what I what mean is like they have their like um, like open source models like available. Everyone can like put their models on the things like they have the API and yeah. and then companies they come just to to be able to like use the API at a better rate or just to like have advice on how to like train or um, what do people like advisory. ask? Um, like where they've been see getting a lot of traction is really just advisory, just like being the premium consulting company to teach people to teach these companies how do you build a really great model? And like, that's just a really big gap in the ecosystem because Accenture and McKinsey and Bain, uh, BCG, like all the traditional consulting companies have just been so slow to uh, like really help companies adapt to the AI trend. And so Hugging Face has just filled that gap really, really well. Are you, um, so I, I, I know we've, we've talked a lot about like companies and like business. But yeah. since, since this is like a, um, a YouTube channel like focus on more like the long-term impact of AI, yeah. do, do, do you see some like um, like dangers in in like raise the dynamics if, if those models become like um, like higher than like human level or 
or superhuman in certain tasks? Like, do you think this, this could be like a, a risk in the long term? I, I, I do think that this is a very real risk. Something that I do wonder a lot about is I, I think in the very near future we're going to start seeing AI enable robotics to take off um, and once that happens what are we going to do to prevent people from creating literal Terminator robots I just don't think it's that difficult and what are we going to be doing about the potential mass unemployment that this can cause? So I, I think that um, if you're saying like, we, we've been seeing a growth of AI chatbots and AI agents that are able to help us do work. And that's very complementary to humans. Once we start seeing AI robots like literally replace humans in the task force, I think that that and potentially like for, be put to military use. I think that that is where um, this is where you draw the line. <laughs> yeah, that is where I would personally draw the line. Uh, and I think that there is no way to prevent the future from happening. If we put regulation in place, then all we're going to be doing is slowing down AI development in the US. And like that, that's not the purpose of regulation. But I, I really think that we like as a community, we should really be thinking about how do we build AI in a way that really complements society. Cool. Yeah. Th thank you very much. Yeah. Um, thanks for having me.